My name is Mr. Tusker Gamers, and welcome to my free maths tutorial. First, I should explain what FreeNAS is. FreeNAS is a Linux NAS solution. First, I should explain that NAS stands for Network Attached Storage and is very useful if you want a lot of data in one place where you don't have it stored on external hard drives or stuff like that. As you can see, I don't have a physical machine right now, but in the future I may be building a physical FreeNAS machine, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be showing you using a virtual machine. To get FreeNAS, all you have to do is go to freenas.org. Now we will continue with the FreeNAS installation. On your physical machine, once you've burned the ISO to the disk, to a disk, and then you've inserted said disk into said physical machine's CD drive, you will boot your computer. So to start, you want to restart your machine, and it should come up with FreeNAS installer. It will automatically execute in 15 seconds, but you can press enter to get it started. You want to hit install and upgrade, then you go get ready on the spacebar and select space on the drive that you want to install FreeNAS on. Flash media is preferred, preferred for FreeNAS, consume it's such a small um, operating system. I recommend if your physical machine is USB 3.0, I recommend just buying a really cheap 8GB. USB 3.0 USB and use those the installation directory instead of an actual hard drive because all your data you're putting on this machine won't go on that hard drive it'll actually go on second hard drives what I recommend is that you have at least two drives for your data array that we're going to be setting up in FreeNAS because it's a virtual machine, I went with two small 25 gigabyte disks, virtual disks on separate physical disk drives in my computer. So we should see semi-realistic performance, hopefully. Okay, you'll come to this screen, they'll say, FreeNAS installation on succeeded. Please remove the CD-ROM and reboot. So I will remove my CD-ROM. I have to force on the outline and I will reboot. That you have network plugged in. I recommend at least gigabit because gigabit, you want at least gigabit so that you can transfer files of at least 100. 25 megabytes a second over gigabit Ethernet. Okay, now it will say this unable to figure out a UUID from DMI data. Please fix if you are an integrator. Basically, what I'm I don't know exactly what this is, but it will have to generate a random UUID of what I imagine is the disk data, a unique identifier that's with every disk. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is for. And it will have to generate a 2048-bit long safe prime. This may take a long time depending on your computer, but considering I'm using an overclocked i5 469k to 4.4 gigahertz, I think this won't take too long. Okay, there we go. And it will take a bit and it will start. There we go. So it is successfully booted up and 
my lovely router has recognized as a new DHCP lease and given it the IP.7 at the end of the 192.168.137 subnet. So what you now want to do, what you want to do now is you want to plug in your FreeNAS IP into Chrome. It shouldn't take too long and it will load the FreeNAS web interface. And there we go. So now log into FreeNAS. What I recommend you do is remember that password that was set during installation. Yeah, that's going to be really useful right now. So you want to type that in. I recommend if you're on a private network of your own, I'd save the password because just for sanity's sake. Okay, now you want to set your language. For me, I'm going to set this to blank because that should be close enough. You want to set your time zone. Bingo. You want to click next, pull name. I recommend just calling it data. Now, now I recommend putting it on automatic unless you specifically want to put it on a certain RAID level and ZFS level. Okay, I recommend just clicking next and not entering anything on this step. It will now, even though it's not saying it, and it's going quite insane. Nope, there we go. Okay, now shares. What you want to do for this step, create a share so that you can put stuff on this data array. For example, I'm going to call the share data. Now, you want to click Windows if you're using Windows, Mac if you're using Mac, General Unix if you're using Linux, Block Storage if you want to go down the iSCSI route. So you want to click Ownership. You want to click user, I recommend going, where is it, it should be called guess. Okay, what I recommend you do is you type in guest, create the user, the user password is nothing because group guest I'm pretty sure is on here. Yep, yeah, there we go. Now we don't want to create the group. It has no password. Return ownership is of guest. And then we want to add it. Now we have to change this later because of the tiny little configuration that we need to do first. Click confirm. Now, setting up the volume may take a long time depending on how many additional disks are installed on the system. Okay, after that is done, it should now show green alerts all across the board if you've done it successfully. Now, we have to do the, a little modification on the shares. We have to go to advanced mode, allow guest access, only guest access. And click OK. After you've done that, we now need to head over to Accounts. Wait for it to load. This is Guest. Primary group is Guest. You want to disable password login. Give them read, write, and execute on all. And hit OK. Now you want to head over to storage and have a look if all is successful. As you can see, mine has 14x compression on data with about 1.5, 2 megabyte bits used. And you can see those LZ4 compression. Now you want to just have a look and make sure that both your disks are registering correctly. And they seem to be doing that. So. Just make sure that everything is working properly. Guest account. Okay, make sure you go to services. CIFS, that's Windows sharing by the way. Guest account and make sure you set this to our new user guest. Allow an empty password, otherwise 
our guest account will just fail and I recommend binding it to an IP address. Now once this has happened you should be able to go into a um, explorer window and type in the IP of your FreeNAS server and to test this out try creating a folder okay I can verify that we do have read and write access on this drive so first you might want to test out your um, performance so for this I'm going to find a quick test file that I have uh, we'll go with the Ubuntu server AMD 64 and we'll try and we'll have a look at how fast it copies okay as you can see we're averaging about 50 megabytes a second. Remember that this is not over a wireless link at the moment, so it's going relatively fast. As you can see, it's got about 10 seconds remaining on a 595 megabyte file. And it's finished. Considering that this is a VM, it has some pretty good performance. Now we should have a check and just to make sure that everything is going fine after your first file copy. For a couple of seconds after the copy the FreeNAS server might be a bit glitchy. This might be only because I'm using VM at the moment but you can see that it now has 1.01 compression and has used 584 megabytes on the server. This has been a lovely tutorial showing you how to install FreeNAS and set up and copy your first file. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, favourite and subscribe. While you're at it, why not check out some of the other videos below me.